Okay, this video is about testing a claim about a mean when sigma is known. So, the notation that we're going to use, well, since we're testing claims about means, we're going to have n for the sample size, x bar is the sample mean, mu of x is the population mean of all sample means uh, of, uh, for samples of size n. Um, this is the same uh, population mean that we use for the central limit theorem. The same uh, notation. Um, sigma uh, is a known value of the population standard deviation. The requirements in order to test claims about a population mean with sigma known are the same as the requirements for creating a confidence interval for means when sigma is known. The first requirement is that the sample is a simple random sample. The second requirement is we have to know the population standard deviation, otherwise we can't use the z-test statistic for the mean. And the third is either or both of the conditions are met, either the population is normally distributed or the sample is large enough, meaning a sample of size greater than n. The test statistic we're going to use um, we've been using the test statistic p hat minus p over the square root of p times q over the over n. But now since we're doing means, we're going to use this test statistic, which is x bar minus the mu of x bar divided by sigma over the square root of n. All right. So let's see. Let's go ahead and test this claim for number 10. All right. <laughs> number 10 says... Data set 2 in Appendix B includes a sample of 106 body temperatures. So we have a sample of size 106 with mean of 98.2%. So the mean or X bar for that sample is equal to 98.2 degrees, not percent, I said percent, degrees. All right, so um, the next thing is assume that sigma is known to be 0.62. So now we're given sigma and we say it's known to be 0.62 degrees. And then they say use a 0.05 significance level. So 0.05 significance level, they're giving me alpha there. Alpha is 0 0.05. So use a 0.05 significance level to test the claim that the mean body temperature of the population is equal to 98.6. So the claim is that the mean body temperature for the population or the population mean is equal to 98.6. I keep saying percent, but it's degrees. This one is the null hypothesis because it contains equality. And that means the alternative hypothesis is the opposite of that, which is mu does not equal uh, 98.6 degrees. All right, so let's see. Is there sufficient evidence to conclude that the common belief is wrong? The common belief is that the body temperature is equal to 98.6. That's the claim, actually. So the claim claim is that the body mean body temperature is equal to that. Okay, so let's go ahead and start our hypothesis test. We have our null and alternative hypothesis. The next thing we want to do, well, I'm going to do this using the traditional method. So I'm going to find the critical Z. So since we have here a two-tailed test, I'm looking for the Z of alpha over 2. And my critical Z is going to be the Z-score that separates an area of alpha over 2 in the right tail. So let's go ahead and find that Z-score. That will be our critical value. So we're looking for, well, alpha is 0 0.05. Alpha over 2 is then 0.025. 5, half of 0 0.05, and I'm looking for the z-score that separates 0.025 on top 
And of course, it's opposite because this is a symmetric distribution, would have 0 0.025 on the bottom here. So I'm looking for that critical Z score. And then these two tails will be my G rejection region. These two tails that, I, that I'm shading over here, these will be my rejection region, all right? So anything that falls in this shaded area will be re any test statistic that falls in this rejection region or this uh, critical region will warrant the rejection of the null hypothesis. And otherwise, if it's in the middle, then we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So let's see. Let's go ahead and calculate this. So we have our TI 83 calculated to do this for us. So we pull it out. Let's see. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to find the z-score. And we need the area to the left. And the area to the left is the complement of 0 0.025. So let's turn it on. We go to second. We go to distributions. And we want an inverse normal. And we're doing the inverse normal for 1 minus 0 0.025. And it turns out that our critical Z is 1.96. So I have a 1.96 for an extremely large value. And anything above 1.96 is going to be unusually large. Or is going to lead us to reject the null hypothesis. And I also have negative 1.96, which is the boundary for extremely small values. So anything less than negative 1.96 will also cause me to reject the null hypothesis. So now I have my rejection region. All I need to do now is calculate this, the test statistic. If my test statistic falls in one of these two shaded areas, then I reject the null hypothesis. If it falls in the white area here, I fail to reject. So let's calculate. Well, this is a Z of alpha over 2, actually. So let's calculate that test statistic. Well, the test statistic, if you look here, the test statistic is going to be x bar minus mu over sigma times the square root of n. So let's see. The test statistic is x bar, 98.2 degrees, minus mu. Well, mu is hypothesized to be 98.6 degrees, 98.6 degrees, divided by sigma, which is 0.62 over the square root of n. And the square root of n is the square root of 106. And this calculation yields negative 6.64. Now, just with my knowledge that um, th uh, that uh, things, values usually fall within two standard deviations of the mean, and this is actually almost seven standard deviations away from the mean, I'm going to assume that this is uh, going to fall in the rejection region. And if you look here, negative 6.64, well, is way out here somewhere. Way out in the rejection region. So negative 6.64 is an extremely, extremely small value. It's way out in the rejection region. So because we have our test statistic out in the rejection region, we reject the null hypothesis. And then we can look to do the final wording for our conclusion from that table. All right. So next, I want to show you how to do this on the TI-83, the weights of bears. So this problem reads, the health of the bear population in Yellowstone National Park is monitored by periodic measurements taken from anesthetized bears. A sample of 54 bears, so we have a sample of 54 bears, has a mean weight, has a sample mean of 182.9 pounds. Assuming that sigma is known to be 121.8, so sigma is known to be 121.8, use a 0.05 significance level, so use a 0.05 significance level, to test the claim that the population mean of all such bear weights is greater than 150. So we're testing the claim that the mean bear weight 
is greater than 150. So we're testing the claim that the mean bare weight is greater than 150. This is the claim. And it's also, because no equality is present, the alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis is that the mean bare weight is equal to 150. Okay, so we have all the things we need. All right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into the TI 83. Oops. Let's see here. Close you out. All right. All right, so now we have our TI open. Let's go ahead and follow these directions. If using the TI-83 plus calculator, press STAT. So we press STAT. And then we select TEST. So we go over to TEST. And choose the Z-TEST. The Z-TEST is number one. Now we can either use the original data, but we don't have data. We have statistics. So we're going to go over and highlight statistics with the blinking cursor and press ENTER to keep statistics highlighted. And then... Now it's going to ask us for the statistics. The mu naught is the population mean that's given by the null hypothesis. So it's 150 in this case. Sigma is the population standard deviation, which is known to be 121.8. 121.8. X bar, X bar is one, the, pop, the sample mean, which is 182.9, 182.9, and let's see, N, N is 54, 54. Then it asks us for our alternative hypo for our alternative hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis is that mu is greater than the null hypothesis, the, the, the mean from the null hypothesis. So, let's see, we're looking at a alternative hypothesis of greater than. So I go all the way over to greater than, I highlight that, and then I go down to calculate. Now, the important number that we're looking for, it gives us the test statistic 1.98. It gives us X bar and N, but the most important thing here is the p-value, 0.02. So we have a p-value, p-value of... 0.02 and this p-value 0.02 is less than alpha is less than 0.05 which is alpha so since the p-value since the p-value is less than alpha we reject the null hypothesis and really it really is that easy with the TI-83